Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel and this is the Lawn Care Life. I'm standing in a yard right now that has some problems with it. And in this video, I'm going to show you the problems. I'm going to talk to you about the problems, the weeds, and the things that need to be corrected this lawn. And I'm going to tell you specifically what I would do to straighten this lawn out. If you enjoy these kind of videos, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can be kept up to date with more videos like this. Let's get started right now beautiful lake view here and looking at a primarily a centipede lawn so let me get down here close and show you some some centipede grass and you say oh what's the the purple little tips on there is that is that some kind of problem most likely we're in the fall when i'm shooting this video it's just from getting a little bit of colder nights and it's caused the grass to start turning and we get you know a little bit and it won't be long before the entire yard will be transitioning into dormancy. Now there is a little bit of zoysia over here. It looks like emerald zoysia. And uh, you can see emerald zoysia typically has that real fine leaf blade on it. But this yard, you know, it, it is far from perfect. So let's talk about what we could do after looking at the problems, I did find some of the weeds and what we could do to improve this yard. All right, so talk, taking a look at the problems. Look at the weeds we've got here. So you've got these big, clumpy, grassy weeds right here. You see this? This is not centipede right here. But it's in mixed in with the centipede. You see here's the, the seed head. This is Dallas grass, and there's a bunch of it in here. And that's not the only weed in the yard. If you get down here close, you see what is all this, this little weed right here. I've been told it's the most common weed and centipede grass. I'm not sure how they measure that. Sometimes people confuse it with spurge. This is called Lespedeza. L-E-S-P-E-D-E-Z-A, -E 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 I believe. Sometimes people comment on my videos, they're like, well, can you, you should put the spelling on there because, you know, we, we can't either understand you or, or Lespedeza is just not a word you use that often. So you got here just tons and tons of Dallas grass. Now you get here, and what do you got? It's a little bit different seed head. If you can see the Y there, that's bahia grass. So you've got a good bit of bahia grass in here. You got an old crepe myrtle that, that was cut down and now is coming back. I don't know if I have any tips for that other than digging it up with a backhoe. Got a big brown spot here where something was probably left in the grass or some type of spill has occurred. You got some clover and other random broad broadleaf weeds that are getting in this lawn. Oh, here's one. I don't see uh, that that too often, but this is called broom sedge. Nightmare weed. It's hard to get rid of. But actually not that difficult to pull up. All right, so the first thing I would do on this lawn is to change the mowing habits of this lawn. So this lawn, I mean, just looking at it, I'm gonna say is probably in the neighborhood of three and a half inches tall. And will it tolerate that? Yes, it will, but I, I would say that's less than ideal. Now, I was taught that centipede needs to be kept low, and centipede can tolerate low mowing, so you can keep it at an inch or inch and a quarter, inch and a half, something like that. Now, if you've let your lawn get to three and a half inches, it's gonna be hard to take it down to an inch, you know, right now. What you're probably gonna have to let this one do, in my opinion, is, is just go ahead and let it go into dormancy and then next spring, try to try to take it back down and get it started low next spring. Some ways, having it longer head into the winter might help insulate the, the roots if we get a cold winter, but I've seen centipede yards with no chemical applications and no fertilizer, and they actually do pretty good if they're mowed nice and tight and frequently. So if you mow this weekly at a, a low height, inch to inch and a half, something in that range, you're probably gonna have a much improved appearance to the lawn, even if we don't do anything as far as weed control or fertilization. And I'm not recommending that we do nothing, I'm just saying that would be a huge improvement on this lawn. Now the next thing I would recommend doing on this lawn was getting on a weed control and fertilization program. So what would that look like? Well, here in the fall, I'm starting in the fall because that's the time of this video. You put out some type of pre-emergent to help with your cool season weeds and mix that with a post-emergent. So, uh, you know, you could use prodiamine as a common pre-emergent and mix it with something like metzofuron, which is a, a relatively, 
cheap product that can at, at a very low rate you, you don't want to go on a high rate with that but i just use it as low as a quarter of an ounce per acre on the metzelfuron but that can help clean up a lot of the weeds including the bahia grass so you know it may not kill the bahia grass but uh, the metzelfuron definitely helps with the bahia grass and can keep it from putting up this seed head of course frequent mowing is going to help a lot but if you deal with bahia grass you know that even if you mow it frequently it still puts the seed head up quickly but if you do that that fall application that'll help another thing you can do whether you want to have a soil test or you just uh, in our area we just have typically have acidic soil so we put lime out and you can do it any time of the year typically as a lawn care company we do it in the winter time um, because that's a little bit of a break in our schedule but if the ph is is very acidic in this lawn that's going to hinder the lawn from being able to access the nutrients in the soil so we want to add lime to the soil to help uh, balance out the ph now the other thing you can do with this zoysia and I, I mentioned earlier about some bare spots you know you've got some emerald zoysia you got a huge bare spot here that's just almost totally filled in with lespedeza and when you control that weed and change up it's a great product for lespedeza it's one that i use and you can use it spot treat and you just put an ounce of change up in a gallon of water and spot treat um, weeds like lespedeza now you want to be careful spraying your centipede lawns especially uh, during transition time like in the spring but you know once it turns fully green or now in the fall um, you could you could take out this lespedeza now i wouldn't worry about it now the lespedeza is already showing some effects of cooler weather so just let the wet winter control it for you but if you have it later on you know if you have it next year which i'm sure it'll be back um, you can control it with change up another thing i might do is consider you've got this zoysia and this emerald zoysia is one of the most shade tolerant varieties for warm season grasses so as you've got this tree over here that's kind of hogging some of the sunlight and and the centipede is doing okay under that tree but you could actually you know get kill off the centipede and sod that with emerald zoysia or you could just plug it you could take some plugs out of this now zoysia doesn't spread very quickly so if you plug it it's going to take a while but you know you might consider getting one pallet of grass to put underneath that tree or even some of these lower limbs that are hanging down you could uh, limb it up you know cut off some of the lower limbs with a pole saw and a little more lower and let allow a little more sunlight to get in under that tree and I think that would be beneficial to helping maybe even the centipede uh, do better. Or, you know, sometimes if it's shady and you just you want to keep the trees and you don't want uh, to limit up, you might just give up on grass altogether and make it more of a natural area with mulch or pine straw and plant you some azaleas or hydrangeas or something like that that is more shade tolerant. Now we talked about Dallas grass in uh, the centipede over there. Here's some Dallas grass in zoysia now if you got just a little bit of dallas grass you might just actually spray it with weed killer and leave a spot in the lawn if you don't mind having a brown spot in the lawn but in this situation in the zoysia lawn you can use tribute totals a product you use a lot it may be a little bit pricey if you're a homeowner but um, we use it in the lawn care business it, it can work in the fall and spring on dallas grass in um in, in zoysia grass or bermuda grass it's not labeled for centipede grass so you can also mix celsius and certainty together and that actually can be sprayed on centipede grass so you could try that it would take multiple applications and you know it, it's honestly you've got all this dallas grass in here it's going to be difficult to get it get it out but in this situation where you've got just a section that's covered i may have like 200 square feet that's covered in dallas grass you might consider um, killing it and and re this area or you can come in here like i said with with the uh, certainty and celsius and do multiple applications again fall and spring is going to be your best time for that it's very difficult to control any time of the year but uh, especially in the summertime it's nearly impossible to control so you might can uh, get some reduction in it that way now what i've been doing on my centipede lawns is putting a, a very light dose of uh, prodiamine out early in the year so january february time frame to try to help you know crabgrass is not a big problem in centipede grass but you do have crabgrass you do have some other weeds uh, the the pre-emergent there can help with those weeds and usually in the early season this is a 
a restricted use product, but atrazine is one that we use to help with clovers and other broadleaf weeds like that that you might see in the lawn. Once the grass turns fully green, like in April or May, then you're safe to use products like Change Up, like I said, which are great for controlling Lespedeza and other weeds like that. And then you start, uh, we typically fertilize our centipede yards starting in May and maybe again in July. We try to stay below two pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet for the calendar year. Of course, if you got irrigation, that would be great if they ran the sprinkler system maybe once a week from May through September and give it a good soaking. That would also help with this line. But again, mowing it tight would make a huge difference. And uh, getting your backhoe in here, I'm just kidding on that partially to get this crepe myrtle gone because I don't know how it's going to get rid of it. I tell people don't plant a crepe myrtle unless you want to keep it forever because they are definitely hard to get rid of. The Dallas grass is going to be a super challenge. Um, but this zoysia could actually look great with a little bit of fertilizer and could spread over and, and you know eventually you might consider putting some under that shade tree but I guess I should probably mention that it looks like it could use an edge or two so I mean you're looking at I'm gonna say that's probably two feet that is grown up out here on this sidewalk so maybe running an edger down this sidewalk once every three or four years might actually clean it up as well and help it look a lot better i know for me the last couple of houses i've bought at my own personal property the yards have been a mess and i've inherited a project and sometimes you take on a customer as a lawn care business owner you're not always taking a yard that's been perfectly manicured and has no weeds into it so you inherit a yard or maybe you've got a yard that's had some problems in it hopefully these tips will help you i'm jason creel appreciate you watching the video if you're in the lawn business i encourage you to go over to lawncarelife.com i've got some resources available for you there and i did want to say that i'm working on a course for those that are in the weed control and fertilization business it's been probably a year in the making and i'm hoping it will be released in the next few weeks so uh, that be more information about that coming up and hopefully be putting that out on lawncarelife.com talk to you guys later thanks for watching bye